mixing up um, my resin and then we'll get started. Um, tonight I'm going to be pouring on this sculpted panel and this is a 12 inch panel. It's in the style called Dune and they make lots of different patterns on these. I really like this one. It's got a lot of, I don't know what you call those, grooves, <laughs> striations in them. And they're not super deep, so you don't use a ton of resin. So this is a nice one to use. And then I'm going to be using the Moss Art Pro resin tonight. I have mixed up 10 ounces. For my colors tonight, I'm going to be using Mixol Black. And then I've got two alcohol inks from Brea Reese. I'm using the Teal and Midnight. And then I have two mica powders over here. I have Maleficent, and then I have this one called Backstage. It looks like a gold, rose gold. Oh, the mold. <laughs> so that is a 12 inch round from Maker's Reusable Molds. And I've used it several times now. I've done a couple of these sculpted panels and these molds come in so handy. If you do these panels a lot, I highly suggest you invest in these molds. And Bear Woods has these in kits now, so you can buy the mold and the panel together. And if you are interested in shopping there, you can use my code, which is Tifton Art, T-I-F-T-E-N-A-R-T. So you can use that for a discount on just about everything on the Bear Woods website. So if you want to give this a shot, I would definitely check it out. All right, so let's talk about this mold for a second. They're called reusable molds because you can use them over and over again. Um, resin does not stick to these. So you put it together with silicone. It's sealed around um, where the side and the bottom meet and then I seal up the side here and then to get it out you just pop it on the back a few times with a rubber mallet take it apart take um, the, the frame off take the side off and then the panel will be stuck to the bottom and um, you just use you could use like the back of a, like a screwdriver or I've used a claw and a hammer. You just kind of get it back there and it pops right off. It's pretty easy. Um, so like I said, this is a 12 inch sculpted panel in Dune and I'm just going to drop it right in and you can probably see there's a tiny, tiny gap. It's about a 16th of an inch all the way around. And I'm fine with that because you're still going to have to sand this once you take it out. You have to, you know, clean up around the edges. You probably have to sand the back a little bit. So I don't mind that there's this little gap and it is the tiniest, <laughs> tiniest little gap. So, all right, so let's mix up the colors Let me grab some cups here. All right, so I want to leave some clear and then um, the other four cups here for colors. So I got one for the teal, black, the blue, gold, and then the mica powder. So these, I'm going to do about an ounce in each of these cups for the alcohol, inks, and the mica. And on this gold mica, I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of it. I'm going to use some more tomorrow with the sand, but I do want a little bit in the top part. The cool thing about these sculpted panels is they're each slightly different from each other, so you never get two that are exactly the same. I'm gonna do 20. I'm gonna start with 20 drops and see. I want um, fairly opaque. It doesn't have to be completely solid, but I want a nice, nice rich black here. All right, so I got the black mixed up. Now the alcohol inks. So these, I've never used these before. I just got these from Bear Woods, so I'm excited to try them out. Um, I want a decent amount of color. It's gonna be actually going over the black, so I wanna make sure that it shows up a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna put one scoop of Maleficent in here. This uh, Maleficent is hands down one of my most favorite colors I have ever used in a mica. Really rich, deep purple. I'm not gonna finish it live just because it's so many tiny little small steps and sanding and I have to do that over at my sanding station. And oh, this is really pretty. So this, this is called Backstage. This actually looks like little metal flakes. 
They're a large, they definitely look larger than typical mica powder. I don't know what the microns are. So if you're trying to decide between the Moss Tabletop and the Art Pro, um, they're both really, really good resins. I've used both, I like them both, but they're both good for different things, at least for me. <laughs> um, I tend to work a little bit slow and the Tabletop resin has a shorter working time. So depending on what I'm doing, sometimes it gets um, it thickens up too quick for me. So if I'm doing a bigger project like this, I'll use the Art Pro because it gives me some more time to get everything mixed and figured out. But if I'm just top coating or something easy, I use the tabletop. All right, so I'm gonna start with the black. These panels, you know, they have all these grooves cut into them. And one of the techniques that I like to use is pouring perpendicular to the grooves. Um, because then it doesn't look quite as stripey. I'm just going to start with that. And everything's going to kind of flow to the low spots. So there's some deeper grooves in here and some shallower grooves. So there's going to be some areas that um, will still be white when I'm done because they're high spots. So I want to kind of move this, get some to the sides. And also, because of that little gap around the edge, resin's gonna fall down into that gap. So depending on how much leaks down underneath the board, you have to kind of watch that because you'll have to add more resin. So the bottom, about the bottom third is gonna have the sand. So I'm not as concerned about what this looks like because the sand is going to cover most of this up. Just want to make sure I won't have too much white showing when I put the sand down. When you do these, just a suggestion that I've found um, kind of through <laughs> trial and error, you also want to make sure when you top coat them that you get a really thick top coat because when you sand it, if it's not thick enough, you're gonna end up sanding through it and then you'll sand the high points of this away. Instead of having the white lines showing, you're gonna end up having wood colored lines showing. So you wanna make sure that your top coat is thick enough to sand. So yeah, Robert, the heat is doing a couple things. It's popping the, the bubbles, cause there's air bubbles with resin. It thins it out so that it can flow a little better. All right, so now I'm just putting some of the purple mica where there's some gaps in the black. And because this is so dark, the alcohol inks aren't really gonna show up except from certain angles. You'll see, they'll probably add a little bit of luminosity to the black wherever they go down, but they're not gonna be real prominent. So if you want them more prominent, you have to put them on top of white. So tomorrow, um, on the second layer, I will be adding some waves with some of the white. So I'm just using the heat to kind of just blow this around. As it warms up, it's getting easier to move. All right. And I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of a little bit of black. I just want to touch up around the edges because I don't want white around the edges. Okay, and just so you know, this is not a hair dryer. This is actually a heat gun. It gets a lot hotter than a hair dryer. This will melt these cups. So when I'm blowing into them, I'm not letting the heat sit in there for too long because it'll just melt it straight down. Some people like to use, um, this is a little butane torch. You can torch, but since I have alcohol ink in here, I don't, I try not to use a flame when I'm using alcohol ink. I have had some unfortunate mishaps with that where I've lit things unintentionally on fire because alcohol and flames kind of don't mix. Um, 
but yeah, that you you definitely need heat when you're working with resin. And I would really highly recommend getting a good heat gun. All right, so I'm just taking a look at it to see if there's a, I want to add anything else. Uh, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of this blue alcohol ink. I saved some clear to use, but the alcohol ink is so transparent. It's kind of acting like a nice clear. So I, I'm not gonna actually use any clear. Okay. All right, then my last step tonight, I'm gonna put some, um, this is just little tiny glass chips but they're just little, little tiny pieces of glass. So I'm just gonna sprinkle these kind of in the higher spots. So if I put them in the low spots, they'll just sink down into the resin and disappear. Put the glass near where I put the glitter. So it kind of looks like maybe it's going from the large glass chunks to the smaller glitter. I might add a little bit more glitter. If you work with resin, you need to have glitter. It's just a staple. <laughs> you do have to be careful with the heat gun too that you don't burn your resin. You can actually overheat the resin and it'll start to smoke. Okay, I think we're at a good stopping point for tonight. I'm gonna leave this to cure overnight. Um, and then I will be back tomorrow, same time, 6 p.m. Central. And I'm gonna do the second layer, which is gonna be, what did I say? The white, I'm gonna be using Mix All White to create some lacing and some cells in here. I'll probably add a few more colors too. This is um, a nice background, but I, I might add some other things for visual interest. I have to sleep on it tonight, but like I said, I will be back tomorrow at 6 o'clock Central Time for part two. So I will see you then. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope to see you tomorrow. Have a good night.